like all of us, I think we have um, periodically, we have very productive time periods. It might be two or three months every decade or, you know, every five years or just things fall in line and you're very concentrated. And uh, it was a good productive period of time at the beginning of the COVID. And I was um, just alone a lot and I had a lot of materials in the house. I didn't have to go out for anything. And I took a couple of walks every day and painted the rest of the time <laughs> and let everything else just fall by the wayside. And um, I've been interested in line in particular and, and in the first markings of mankind from cave paintings to early Greek pots to African to Aborigine art. Uh, it, it always touches me and interests me and excites me and the materials that they use. And, um, and I'm always trying to figure out how can I bring a, my part of the conversation to that kind of work. And I started working when I was about five. And um, I, one of the interesting parts about getting older <laughs> is that um, you can look back and I, I put things that I made 40 years ago and 35 years ago next to the things I'm making today. And even though you're, you're always thinking this current work, boy, I'm really, I'm moving out. I'm doing something really new. They all just flow together and they, I seem to have the same kind of um, interest in what I'm doing. I like materials and I'm process oriented. I'm always looking for what is the emotional, emotional connection between the viewer and the work. Um, first, my emotional connection, but what someone else might uh, find in it. I wish we educated everybody more into why, what, what is it about art? What, why do you want it? Um, why would you want to have this in your life other than um, decoration, you know, and all the things that looking at having a piece of, of art and looking at it and then what, what it can bring to you. Well, I'm a thematic person, you know, and I think it's just my science background. I always, it's all like an experiment to me. And I'm very careful what to use, how to use it, you know, when to use it and so on. And I'm loving ballpoint pen. I'm using ballpoint pen all the time. I'm keeping zebra in business all by myself. <laughs> you know, they should send me boxes of pens. <laughs> when I started making these, I started thinking about how do things start? And I was thinking of entropy, which is things start in order and end up in chaos and then go back to order and end up in chaos. And, and I have a chemistry background. And I realized as I started making all these things that my chemistry background was kind of kicking in, you know, and looking at detail and making small marks and using it as a form of meditation. And once a year, I read Walt Whitman's um, Song of Myself, which is a 66 stand, stanza poem. And one of the lines said, for it, the nebula cohered to an orb. And I said, what the hell is a nebula? So I looked it up. And a nebula is the nursery of the stars. That's what it, it means, cloud in Latin. And, and they look like these smears of paint. That's how a nebula looks. Now, I didn't copy nebula. You know, I'm not making them like the nebulas that I saw. And I realized all this time that that's what I was doing was I was showing how the beginning really, and they call it the nursery of the stars. And they say it, it ends and begins and ends and begins and ends and begins and it goes on and on and on and on. And there's tons of nebulas in the universe. And so then I made a book since it was the 44th stanza of the poem. I did 44 drawings. And it's called Nebula for Walt Whitman. I haven't shown those yet. And now I'm doing the Nebulas for the city, which the rebirth of the city that I've been working on for the last few months. 
on behalf of Kurt, his approach um, was really through direct observation uh, and of nature and of people and whatever. And he fused that with learned knowledge of art history and nature. Um, he always had a sketchbook with him. And I think everybody fully realized that. And everything was recorded there. It could have been about people, um, landscapes. It could have been thoughts and reflections. Some of the best are his drawings with all of his uh, verbal and written text on it. So it was, he was capturing an awful lot each time he did it. It really informed all of the areas that Kurt was so interested in, which had to do with form and structure and, um, and then materials that he could combine to capture some of those depths. So though that was, and it was endless for him, absolutely endless. And then he often would like to think about what was under the surface, and then he would draw that in so that you could see the, the landscape in a different way. And that was part of his general knowledge of um, nature and, um, and the history of art. So he liked the form of perspective. He liked Asian art, he liked, you know, it was endless what he liked and especially European art and medieval and whatever. So all of those factors come into his work or evolved in, in different ways through his paintings. Um, in fact, he got into art school because he had traveled to Mexico and done a lot of um, uh, images um, and he, he submitted something. He didn't even know what art school was at the time. It was after the war. And he submitted some pieces and it was like, okay, you got anything else? And he showed them some of that. And it was like, you have a lifetime right here. No one's standing in line waiting for the next George Wegman painting to roll out. Um, there's no one, you know, it's, it's never been about celebrity or making money or anything. You know, for me, it's been more about exploration and the fun of making stuff and yeah. also the mystery of it. It's just, you know, I, you never know where it's going. <laughs> and, you know, I like that freedom and I like um, not having the responsibility of trying to satisfy anyone. So <laughs> starting in like last March, uh, of course, life like, took a big change. I spent more time in the studio and to escape kind of the monotony of the day, uh, I would go out and take my um, iPhone camera and start walking the neighborhood and looking for things that, I don't know, that became of interest to me. And, uh, you know, I wasn't looking for anything in particular, but when I got back, I would say that there's kind of a common thread through a lot of this and everything felt kind of um, in the in the state of deterioration <laughs> uh, and um, so then it started I started to relate that a little bit to my own mortality I started to say hey you know I'm old I'm getting older too and things aren't the way that they were and everything somehow has its like time. And so these are kind of just some of the back thoughts that I was having, you know, when I was collecting these photographs. And um, so then I brought them back and, you know, into the studio, I started looking through some of them. And so I started to incorporate these six by six images into my eight by 10 photographs. You know, sometimes they were more compatible with each other than others. Um, and, but they would, you know, it would just, to me, raise the photograph to a different kind of interest level. And Thank you. 